Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and today I want to take a look at a new free-to-play game that just launched off Steam called Ghost Recon Phantoms. Uh, this, I believe, was actually in open beta forever under a different name called Ghost Recon Online, but with the, the launch of Steam, and I think with a massive update to the game where they updated the matchmaking system, they added new weapons, new weapon balance, a lot of new stuff, they decided to have a rebrand. They wanted to bring in some fresh blood, and I think this is one way to go about it, and so I took it upon myself to try and figure out if this was something to invest your time into. Is the mechanics good? Is it better than the beta? Is this something that you would want to play with your friends? And for the most part, I would say that it is. Like, I had a good time for, I think, the, the 10 hours I played so far, but there are some very large glaring issues that I'll talk about here in a second uh, that may deter you from playing Ghost Recon Phantoms. And so, at its core, this is a tactical third-person shooter. You're gonna have to use their cover system to move from objective to objective. You're gonna have to rely on your teammates to do their job so you can and actually win the round and if you come from a Call of Duty or a Battlefield background uh, you're gonna be out of your element for a couple of rounds it's gonna take some time getting used to the new cover system it's gonna take some time getting used to relying on your allies heavily to push up onto different objectives using their different abilities to their advantage and if you if you enjoy that it is an absolute blast like they I would say nail the tactical gameplay if you're able to go on a kill streak where you kill more than four people in a row you feel simply amazing and when you do that alongside your teammates who are also allowing you to get those kills or you're assisting them and taking down the enemy getting those awesome flanks off it can be an incredible experience and what enhances that is that they have different classes that have different abilities which also result in different types of gameplay uh, the assault class is probably my least favorite out of the three it's going to use shotguns and assault rifles to dispose of your enemies but what's unique about it is that it has two different abilities the first one which i think is absolutely hilarious basically allows you to bust out a giant riot shield and then charge downfield at mach 5 and then any enemy that you come across, as long as you get close to them, you can knock them to the ground, and then for, I think, two seconds, which feels like an eternity in this game, they're basically left floundering. And then at that point, you have a couple options. You can continue on trying to charge down fields, seeking out other enemies to dispose of and knock them out as well, or you can just basically switch on over to your primary weapon, primary weapon and quickly dispose of them. Uh, their other ability is pretty much a massive suppression weapon. If anyone is behind a wall where you know that there is about two or three enemies, this thing will suppress the hell out of everything behind that structure. Like, it is amazing. Like, their screen their screen glow, goes blurry. I think they also take a little bit of damage. It's not significant. But this then allows your teammates to push on over, get out from behind cover where they normally would have been vulnerable, but now that the enemy is severely suppressed, they cannot see what's going on around them, this then allows your teammates to flank around and quickly take them out. It's basically one of the best team-oriented gadgets in the game. So that's the Assault class. Uh, the Support class, on the other hand, is an entirely different beast. It's going to be able to use shotguns and light machine guns, but where it excels is with its its unique abilities once again. Its first ability is flat out amazing, probably one of the best in the game, where for a good while, I want to say like five to ten seconds, I can't remember the specifics, but for a really long time, you create a massive force field around you. You can shoot out from that force field, doesn't do anything to your bullets, but the enemy can't shoot inside, and so for those good couple of seconds, you're immune to damage, and so if you know that the enemy is on an objective, they are hunkered down, your team is having a really hard time pushing in, you can activate this massive force field, and as long as you use it appropriately, it's pretty much GG for that certain objective. Uh, they do have a massive cooldown, like all of these different unique abilities have an incredibly long cooldown, so don't think like you're going to be able to pop this left and right and you can use them like candy. No, that's simply not the case, but as long as you do use them appropriately, as long as you're able to take advantage of them, they are extremely powerful. Uh, the other unique ability of the support class is that they fire off an EMP grenade. So basically anyone that's near it, I think their their UI is scrambled. I think their screen goes a little fuzzy. I haven't had that done to me very often, so I don't know if this is one of the uh, one of the better ones. I want to go on a limb and say that it's one of the least used, uh, but that is the, another option available to the support class. Uh, the recon though is easily my favorite. If you want to use submachine guns for close encounter combat, they have that available to them. But also if you want to go for a more long range one shot headshot shots with bolt action rifles uh, that is also in their arsenal their abilities are flat out ridiculous the first one is is stealth it pretty much blurs you you're hard to see it's very self-explanatory your your stealth it's not like world of warcraft stealth where you're completely invisible like the enemy if they're really looking out for you and they know exactly where you are then they can slightly see you but uh, it makes it one of the best ways at flank your enemy getting behind enemy lines and then taking everyone out like it's flat out fantastic 
sick. Their other ability is also simply ridiculous, and it basically gives you wall hacks. Like, when you activate it, it will send out a pulse, and any enemy that comes in contact with that pulse, they, they show up. Like, you see a red outline around them, it allows you to know exactly where they are, and you can pretty much have this activated for a good while. And so, if your teammates need to have that information because they're about to push up and they have no idea what's around the corner, you activate this and let everyone know what's going on. It is, it's easily one of the best abilities in the game. And so hopefully this gives you a good impression as to why this is such a team-oriented game. All of the abilities can be used selfishly. You can use them to take out your targets individually. But if you use them in tandem with other teammates and you use them appropriately, it, it makes it such a much more enjoyable experience. Like if you use teamwork in this game, it's going to go a lot further if you just go for the more lone wolf, lone wolf role like you can in a lot of other first-person shooters or third-person shooters. Like, it is extremely team-oriented. Uh, that being said, though, where we start to run into some problems is when we take a look at its matchmaking system and, honestly, its pay-to-win monetization. Uh, when I first started playing the game, I was put into a beginner bracket where everyone was new to the game, they were using all of the, the basic stock weapons, they didn't have a lot of customization unlocked at that point, everyone was trying to figure out the cover system, it was pretty much just a level playing field. And for that good seven hours, I was basically in the beginning bracket for a good seven hours, I had the time of my life. It was well balanced, no one was using an overpowered weapon, it felt fantastic, I had some great team-oriented gameplay, it was simply amazing. Uh, but once I graduated out of the beginner bracket, that's when I started to run into some problems. I don't know if it was simply because I was going against veterans that knew what they were doing, I don't know if it was because they knew the maps better than I, but I want to say, and it was pretty apparent, that the weapons that they were using were just simply better. The way that they have set up the monetization system in this game is that you can buy every single weapon, you can buy every single uh, customization, every single gadget with real world money. Uh, normally, I would not have a problem with this. I played League of Legends where you can buy different champions. I played Planet Side 2 where you can buy different weapons with real world money. The problem comes into play though is that uh, the weapons that you can buy in Ghost Recon Phantoms are actually better than the stock weapons. If you play Planet Side 2, in my opinion, the stock weapons are easily like some of the best in the game. If you want to go out and buy different weapons, it allows you to have different types of play style, but the stock weapons are simply fantastic. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case in Ghost Recon Phantoms. Like, if you want to do well in this game, it seems like you need to put down a pretty penny to start to unlock some of these weapons. And the funny thing about it is that it seems like the developers know that this is the case. Like, the only way for you to buy, let's say, the highest SMG in the game is to purchase every single tier before. I think it's like first tier, second tier, all the way up into seven. And the seventh tiered weapon, the seventh tiered SMG, has a higher average weapon rating compared to the first tier. And that, in my mind, just indicates that the developers know exactly what they're doing, that these weapons, the higher tier, are better. Uh, you can unlock everything though with in-game currency. Like if you want to grind everything out, you want to go in, you don't want to spend any money, that is an option in this game. But once you get out of the beginner bracket, it just doesn't seem worth it to me. Like I was going against players that were just destroying me. And I, I don't mind getting killed by experienced players. I don't mind being at a disadvantage because I'm not up to their standard yet. But it, that's just not what it felt like. It felt like I was getting outplayed because of the weapon they were using and not because of their skill, and that definitely got on my nerve. Uh, the developers do seem to realize that this is a pretty large issue, so they have changed the way that the matchmaking system works, where it takes into consideration your not only your skill level, but also your equipment, so that you'll be placed with players that hopefully will have around the same uh, equipment as you. But at the same time, right now, there just isn't enough people playing Ghost Recon Phantoms. I know this is also the reason why they have posted this on Steam, and this is a Steam release, so that they can increase the player pool, and they have more people to choose from, but at least right now, once you get out of the beginner bracket, you're pretty much just going against players that have been playing since day one, have all of the best weapons in the game, and you just get absolutely destroyed. Uh, this could resolve itself in a couple of weeks. Once more people get out of the beginner bracket, once the larger player pool of Steam gets integrated into the game, uh, things could change dramatically, and it could become a lot more enjoyable. You could be placed with a lot more people that have along the same uh, skill level, but also equipment, and so that could be what changes things for me, but at least right now, now that I'm in the, the higher bracket, 
I, I don't have any desire to play the game at this at this instance because it does feel a little bit too much pay to win. And so, honestly, this is a pretty big disappointment. I love the game at the start. I love the mechanics. I love the cover system. I like how it's so tactical. It is a lot of fun. But to reach that, basically, it felt more like a paywall at this point, reach the point where I was going against players that had the best weapons in the game. I didn't at the time. I just was getting absolutely destroyed. It's disappointing that that is such a large component of the game because if they just switched it around a little bit so it wasn't so much pay to win and that the stock weapons were a little bit more competitive I, I think that it would be a lot more enjoyable uh, but that's about it for today's video guys I hope you enjoyed uh, let me know what you think about Ghost Recon Phantoms are you loving it so far do you think it's as pay to win as I think it is let me know down below uh, but until tomorrow have a good one and take it easy